Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today's video is a highly, highly requested one. We are doing a dark and moody style living room just for you because you all asked for it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more makeovers like this one and let's get into it. Hey, my name's Jen Kitagawa and I'm an illustrator and artist from Toronto. I live downtown with my roommate Vanessa and her cute cat Kiki and we have a really great living room. It has south facing windows, we get great light during the day and then there's just a beautiful brick wall. But currently it's lacking a bit of cohesion because there's mismatched furniture and I think it could just use a bit of a refresh. And although my work can be quite colorful, I kind of tend to prefer my home space to be kind of common classic. Thank you so much Team AG and I'm really excited to see what you guys do. Ever since I made over Noah's living room in his old space, you guys have been asking for a similar style, dark, moody, brick wall accent, velvet, sofa, you know, the whole vibe. So today we are making over Jen's living room. Jen is actually an artist that I followed for a while. She does lots of commissions around the city of Toronto. I will link all of her social media down below. This is what the living room looks like now. It's a really big space. I'm so excited that I get to work with such a enormous amount of space because we're usually working in like tiny, tiny apartments. So because this room is so big, the layout of this space is kind of feeling like there's two separate rooms going on. And this is just like a very common setup. Everyone moves into their space and they just put their furniture against every single wall. What ends up happening is that your room doesn't have a ton of flow to it. It actually feels like too open. There's no kind of coziness or warmth. So I'm gonna hopefully give you some tips and tricks on how to make it feel cozy and warm. And I'm so excited, this is gonna be a challenge. So here's what I'm thinking. I think she has the same Ikea sofa as I do. I think it's the Karlstad sofa. And this is really great news because I have a BEMS cover. It's this dark green velvet. And I really think that this is gonna be the perfect jumping off point for the rest of the space. So I actually need to like go visit the space, scout her living room and make sure that it's a Karlstad sofa. But for now, now, I'm gonna say that we are going to recover the sofa in this beautiful green velvet sofa cover. I want to paint the walls a dark green color to match this sofa. I think it's gonna be so fun to color block the two. I did this in Noah's living room and just made such a statement and really kind of leaned into that dark and moody feel. I definitely want to hang a piece of her art above the sofa. I wanna do a little bar area in this little nook. It's like this little like indent in the wall here. I think this would make a really cute bar area. I definitely wanna upcycle that Calyx unit she has. She has so many records and I think it'd be really fun to turn this unit into something super stylish and like a record station area. In order to make this space feel a little bit cozier, I am going to create a conversation area with two large armchairs facing the sofa. Jen doesn't have a television and she doesn't plan on getting one, so I can really lean into this like conversation area and not have to have the furniture pointing to a specific wall. Okay, so now it's time to pass this plan off to Alana and we are going to start sourcing. Okay, so I just got back from scouting Jen's again, and the sofa that they have there is a struck tube sofa. It's not an Ikea sofa, which is a huge bummer because we have this amazing green sofa cover from Bems that would have been so perfect if it was an Ikea sofa. I think Kiki, their cat, scratched it up a little bit, so I think we could use a new sofa in the space anyway. So I'm gonna try to thrift one on Facebook Marketplace or Kijiji and see if we can make this a really budget-friendly hack. Fingers crossed, Alana can thrift something. I believe in her. It's just that I've given her the task to thrift a discontinued IKEA sofa. <laughs> Sorry. So we have been trying to secure a sofa to recover with that extra BEMS cover we have. For those of you who don't know, the Karlstad sofa, that's the sofa I'm sitting on, and the sofa we have a cover for has been discontinued from Ikea. So Alana has been just looking everywhere for one of these sofas. And she's found a few, but they're in rough condition. We haven't had much luck until this is the sofa we need. This is the price. Yep, we're gonna snag that free sofa that we are gonna recover and make 
look like a million bucks. Superhero Alana secured the free Karlstad sofa. It's in amazing condition. She is going to head there now, move it into Jen's space. I can't wait to see it. So because we are filming multiple makeovers at once, you guys probably don't know that because you're just watching one makeover at a time, but we usually have like three makeovers on the go. We have delegated Graham, oh, we love Graham, to paint Jen's space in preparation for our prep day. Graham sent me this photo of the walls and I was like, yes. The green is just so beautiful. It's dark and moody, but it also has this element of like brightness to it. Like it kind of like complements this brick wall while still sticking in that very dark and moody vibe. How many times am I gonna say dark and moody in one video? Dark and moody, dark and moody, dark, moody, very dark, very moody, dark and moody space, dark and moody feel, dark and moody vibe, dark and moody today. <laughs> Hey guys, it is, I guess, officially day one of this makeover, even though Graham was here yesterday. So he painted the whole room this beautiful, beautiful green color. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like behind the scenes. <laughs> Very chaotic. There's stuff everywhere. So I think we're just gonna start by like unpacking things, organizing things. Graham's gonna work on touching up the paint. We're just gonna get situated. <laughs> How's she delivering? We all have Jen's art pieces blown up and framed by Poster Jack, and we're gonna unbox it now. Oh my gosh, it's gonna look so good! Okay, we are starting with an IKEA Kallax hack DIY. We're gonna keep this as record storage, but we are going to just jazz it up a little bit, elevate it. So Alana and I are just gonna take out all the records. It's gonna be an undertaking. Stack them to the side, and then we can just start working on this unit. Jen had this existing Calyx unit, as I mentioned, and this is a perfectly great piece. We are just going to give it a little extra style, dress it up a little bit. So the first thing we're doing is adding a butcher block top. We found this at the hardware store. It was actually on sale. This is supposed to be an island top. We just cut it down to size and suddenly you have this beautiful custom herringbone wood top for your Calyx. Beauty. It already looks 10 times better. We haven't even added the legs. So Graham has cut it so there's a bit of an overhang here and at the back as well. To fix this to the top of the Calax, we're using wood screws, pretty simple, and we're gonna screw from under here through the wood. Nice, solid. I love a Calax, but I think when it's on the ground, it can feel a little bit more like casual, which is totally a vibe and a look, but for this space, I wanted to elevate it and just make it look truly custom. So we got these awesome legs from Pretty Pegs. I've talked about Pretty Pegs so many times, but they're basically a company that you can get furniture legs that fit into Ikea furniture. So we're using these, they're so cool. The issue is there was a mix up with our order and we only received three legs. So Graham and I are just gonna hack the other three legs, <laughs> but we're gonna put these on the front. So this is what you'll see. One here, one here, one here, and then we'll figure out the back situation. If you're hacking Ikea furniture that doesn't already have existing legs, like the Calyx unit, for example, doesn't come with legs, Pretty Pegs will send you brackets, and these brackets are what screw into the legs. So we're just gonna fix the bracket onto the Calyx unit, put the legs on, and Bob's your uncle. There you go. We are bringing in a sofa, and we're not using the legs on it, we're switching them. So Graham just hacked one of the sofa legs, cut it down to size, and this is what we're using for the back legs. Sometimes you just have to improvise, you know? You're not gonna be able to see these legs at all, so we're just leaving them as is. Very chaotic in here, so I'm not gonna show you what this looks like now. But tomorrow, when we style it, you'll get to see the full piece. What a 180. 180? 360. <laughs> what a 360. <laughs> It's DIY day, clearly, because we are now DIYing some cool record holders. I wanted to do record holders since we made over Carla's apartment, but today's finally the day. So this is the inspo photo I'm using. I love the idea of having like 10 records on display. It creates this cool gallery wall of records and you can put your newest purchases, your favorites, what you're listening to. I just think it's like a fun way to jazz up this brick wall. 
I like it. Safety first. So the first thing you want to do is take your piece of wood and you want to draw a semicircle on it using an object like a cereal bowl or a coaster, anything that's round. And then you want to draw yourself a little rectangle. This is going to be for the base of the record holder and you want to make a three by five inch rectangle on your piece of wood. Also make a mark for a three quarter inch piece and this is going to be the front of your record holder. Cut out all the pieces using a jigsaw. We did this inside. I mean, it works. If you have like a garage or a studio, even better. But reality is you're also probably doing this in your living rooms. Am I right? Safety first. Just be careful. Don't hurt yourself. Once you have all your pieces cut out, it's time to assemble. So you're just going to assemble it all using wood glue. And then you're going to take a clamp to make sure it's all nice and pressed together. And you're just going to let it dry. For an extra decorative touch, we're adding some dowels to the front. So I'm just cutting these dowels down using a handsaw and then wood gluing these to the front. Once the dowels are secured, you wanna give the whole piece a really good sand. And this is just your chance to make sure all your curves are like perfectly curved. And you wanna make sure that there's no like jaggedy edges of wood. Just smooth it all down. While that record holder is drying, I'm gonna start painting the ones that we've already created. So you can see our finished record holders here. And we had originally stained them, but being in the space, I'm like, they're gonna blend into the brick too much. And I thought, why not paint it the same green as the wall color? And that way, it's like a cute little nod to the green wall. Okay, so we just finished the record holder DIY. This room is still so chaotic. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. The chaos. Oh, we still need to unbox these chairs. This is our record player stand. Oh my gosh, you guys look at this room. This is what makeover days usually look like. We are now going to move the old sofa out of the living room to make way for the new one. This sofa really needed an upgrade. Jen lives with a cat named Kiki and Kiki has really pulled at the threads of the sofa. So I wanted to give you guys a little tip if you have animals. I get this question all the time. What fabrics are best to use if you have a pet? Now, you'll see that with Jen's old sofa, the weave of this sofa is a loose weave. So Kiki was able to like dig her claws in and pull the threads out of the sofa. With this BEM sofa cover, because it's velvet, it has a tighter weave, which means that there's not a ton of threads for a cat to pull out. It really depends on the kind of velvet you're using, but I have a BEM sofa cover. It's the exact same one as this one, just in a different color. And Lottie does scratch at it sometimes, but you really don't notice because there's not a ton of threads to pull out. So just a little tip if you have an animal that likes to scratch. We are adding brand new legs to this sofa. I'm so excited. These are from Pretty Pegs as well. So the same company that we used on the Calyx unit. We are also just putting the new velvet cover on and the sofa was actually in amazing condition. The great thing about most Ikea sofas is that you can take the covers off just like we're doing. And that's why we are adding a new custom cover. This cover was made just for a Karlstad sofa, which is why we had to thrift one and find the exact model that fit this cover. Normally you'd work the other way. You'd have the sofa and then reupholster it. But it looks like a $3,000 sofa that we thrifted. The last thing we're doing today is changing out the ceiling fan. In some spaces, just like Jen's, a ceiling fan is non-negotiable. This living room gets really hot in the summer. Ceiling fans are one of those things that you might not think can be cute, but leave it to Team AG to find the cutest ceiling fan on the market. This one is from Home Depot, really affordable. I'll link it down below. And what a flippin' game changer. Can I say flippin'? Why would you even say flippin'? <laughs> I don't know. That's why I'm dying. Ooh! ooh. We shall some <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to day Two. We had such a great prep day yesterday and I'm so excited to start pulling everything together. I put this awesome rug down. This is from Rugs USA. I always talk about Rugs USA because you can get a really large size rug like this for not a lot of money. This has these diamond shapes on it. It's jute, but also has this charcoal gray, adding to the dark and moody vibes. So excited. Okay, so next I'm gonna bring in the sofa that we recovered yesterday. You are not gonna believe what this sofa looks like now. 
tip for matching your sofa cover to your wall color. It's handy to start with the sofa cover and then work your way from there. So have the sofa cover in your hand and then just browse online, like go to a paint website or you can use a paint deck. Browse through their colors and just find one that looks like it matches. <laughs> Do a lot of test swatches, ask friends, but narrowing it down, I think, to like two or three solid colors that you think will match is a good start. I actually can't believe that we took this secondhand sofa and turned it into this. Whoa. <laughs> okay, this gorgeous light is from Article. I'm just putting on the shade, and this light is just gonna like swoop beside the sofa, fill the room. Wow, she's a beaut. Okay, let's plug her in. Ah, it's so beautiful. I love a swoopy light. I don't actually use these a lot because we're usually working in smaller rooms. This light is such a beaut in this corner, like with the green wall, the sofa. I honestly think we could just like leave right now. Bye. It's time to put the armchairs down. You guys, these armchairs, I, I just can't. It's the same line as the sofa we have at the studio from Article. I'm sitting on it now. This color is so beautiful. It's like a gold, yellow, and it's gonna look so good against the green velvet. I can't handle this chair. I can't handle the sofa, I can't handle this chair, I can't handle this light. It's like only like nine in the morning and I'm like, I can't handle anything. I don't think you can handle this. So in order to figure out where we're gonna place these, I used SmartDraw, one of my favorite platforms to create floor plans. So I knew that I wanted to change the sofa from being against the brick wall to the other side of the room. And then I'm bringing in the armchairs, making sure I've resized them in SmartDraw to their actual size. And you guys can see here how I'm really trying to create this like conversation area. So you have the two chairs facing the sofa and then the record player behind the chair. So there's still lots of room to get between the chairs to get to the record player, but it kind of like closes up the room in the best way. Like it makes it warm and cozy and inviting instead of like huge and airy and like, hello, like echoing. Hello, 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 hello. I would highly recommend using a floor plan to experiment or simply just like starting to move furniture around in your space and try to challenge yourself to not put everything against the walls. Whoa. <laughs> just whoa, just whoa. I don't think we've ever really done a, like a conversation area in a living room before. It just really works. It transforms this entire space. The use of it, the look of it, I love it. Next, I'm placing the Calax and I'm adding a couple baskets just so Jen can put any stuff that she doesn't want to be seen in these baskets. Storage for records, storage for books and notebooks, all the things. Remember these record holders that we DIY'd yesterday? They look so good. I'm so glad we decided to paint them green. Now it's time to stick them on the wall. You're probably wondering, but Alexandra, how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna stick them on brick? We are using really heavy duty, extreme <laughs> tape for brick and tile. I'll link the one we use down below. I think it's from Scotch, the Scotch brand, but you can get this at most hardware stores. So we put three strips on the back. I'm gonna peel the strips back. Place it where I want it to go. Pop the level on top. And then I'm just gonna press it. The package says to hold it for one minute, so I guess we're just gonna hold it here for one minute. One minute later. This is like solid. I can't even rip this down. This is amazing. Carla, feel this. Wow. Solid, right? Okay, let's do it. Let's do the rest. You wanna make sure there's equal spacing between each of your record holders, and we are doing two rows of five. So we have 10 record holders in total. Guys, this looks so good. It's like we're in a record store right now. I cannot. If any of you guys at home have record players and lots of records, do this DIY. So simple, but like, so beautiful. This coffee table was a home sense find. You have the dark tones, but it's really interesting. It's not too big. I love this piece a lot. This side table is from Bed Bath & Beyond. It has the wood top, the metal accents, really kind of playing on the materials we used on the Calax unit. She's got curves. 
So whenever you have an empty corner, like a little indented wall like this, I think this used to be a door of some sort, put a bar cart there. I feel like bar carts are decorative and in a living space like this where there's a conversation area, it's just nice to have like a cute bar set up, you know? And then I'm gonna put a picture on top of it. I don't know if anyone remembers, the sassy little lady, but I have a larger version of this in James's nook at the studio. I just think she's so cool. So we got these from the thrift store, $3 for two. They have black stems, you guys. So good. Next up, I'm adding some curtains on these windows, a long curtain that drapes that adds like sophistication and style. It just like ups the ante of your space. It makes it look super sleek, super stylish, and very like luxe, as Amanda would say. Very like rich. I decided not to hang curtains on the small window. I wanted to let as much light in as possible. And I think it would have looked kind of weird because the windows are at different heights. You don't have to put curtains on every single window in your home, hot tip. And I think it's gonna look really nice just uncovered. This gold ornate mirror was in another room in Jen's apartment, but I literally just like stole it off the wall, put it in the living room because there's no other option. It belongs in this living room. I purchased a piece of Jen's art from Etsy and I sent it to my friends at Poster Jack, an amazing company that frames and prints artwork. They always do such an amazing job, especially if you're getting something blown up into a really big size. It looks amazing above the sofa. Now it's time for those finishing touches. It's time to bring in Jen and reveal the space to her. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see her reaction. Okay, Jen, I want you to picture what your space looked like before. Can you walk me through it? It was kind of a mix of different furniture. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of in need of like a refresher. Yes. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? On the can of three, open your eyes. One, two, three. Whoa. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's so different. The wall looks so good. Do you like it? Yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> Couldn't forget Kiki, so we oh gave her a little bed. <laughs> it's so cute, I can't wait to see her in it. Is this an upcycle? Yeah, that's actually your original cabinet. Yeah. We framed one of your art drawing. <laughs> that's amazing. And I love the green. I'm so glad you like it. I'm so excited. A responsible amount of friends. Over. <laughs> Thanks for watching. As always, I will see you guys next week. Bye. I'm gonna do that whole thing again. I like the energy. Though. I know the energy is high. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thank you so. Much. I love how you're always like pumping me up. Hello. <laughs>